All right, there we go. So this is going to be my inspiration. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to follow this. We're going to be. I'm going to be lifting up some of the mists and some of these little different things. But um, I'm going to do one that's going to be a um, an evening scene and then a morning scene, or like a sunset in a kind of a foggy day. Okay. So what I'm going to do is start with my the first one here. I'm going to create a complex black using my French ultramarine blue and also my sepia here to make a really nice dark value. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my paper on one side wet. I guess I should have done that before, first before I started creating. Oh look, it's a little bit textured. So I'm just going to create, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not really worry too much about um, leaving some white spaces because that's going to be like a resist right make something interesting so now i'm going to go ahead and grab my french ultramarine blue letting that paper absorb make a nice gray value and i'm going to kind of add a little water to it here you can get them closer you're going to be so far away <laughs> there's like Just a little, just a little bit, just a little something going on here. A little white area, just nice and, I can actually put some more water in here a little bit. So now I'm going to again start nice and light, do a farther, a little hill back here. A little bit less pigment, more water. Okay, because we want to kind of have... If it has a lot of pigment, it won't, it won't bloom as much or it won't mix as much. It'll kind of stay still a little bit. All right, so just kind of making this little interesting heel here. Oh, some, some red there. It's fine. All right. Just kind of fading down. And again, I have my paper at an angle. A little more of a steep at an angle here. So it can run down even more. Go ahead and grab a little bit more of my, a little more pigment. Maybe, as long as I have this nice little wet area here, down here, the, it's not going to create a line, right? Because it's still wet, right? So it's, you know, that same, same thing we were talking about and doing with that, um, with the dry or with the, um, the flat wash. We were just following that little bead of color down. See now, see how it's starting to resist some areas that I didn't put water on? That's what I'm going for. I'm going to add a little more here. A little more pigment. You know, again, you have more control, a little bit more um, time to work once the paper is, is nice and wet. Put some little interesting something going on here. Now here, not sure what I'm gonna do here, but that's the nice thing about, I'm just creating, just kind of let, letting this wash kind of help, kind of, you know, you can't really control it when it comes to the wet on wet. So I try to do these imaginary landscapes, just kind of go, okay, I see a big tree clump here and some here, you know, just let it, do his thing. Notice I got nice and light here. As I go further into the foreground, I added more pigment. So I want to I want to have a sense of of depth. Let me put a little something here. A little bit more here. Maybe just maybe a little bit of a chunk here. Okay. And that bead of water is there, so I can kind of, who knows what this is, maybe rocks or something, what, whatever it can be, you know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a damp, uh, just uh, clean my brush off and just drag, maybe water or something. And then maybe grab a little bit more pigment here and just put a little bit of a grounding element 
down here in the bottom. And then once this dries, I can kind of play around with it a little bit. And again, since the paper is wet and it's 100% rag paper, we have more room to play. We can still lay down. So you notice here, it's already starting to dry. So I can't really go back up there. But here, since the water's running down, I can play around and create little darker values in here. Right? Who knows what these things are? It doesn't matter. Little trees, little something, just dark shapes. Maybe I'll put a house there or something, some guy fishing. Maybe I'll put like a little tree, a little little bank here on this side of the water. Nice and dark, and I'll put a nice dark tree going through here. All right, perfect. So what I can do now is this is a little bit damp, so I can grab my paper towel, and I can lift up a couple of these little areas in here. Maybe I can just put a little, little area here. Let me cut into my little forest here. You just lift up. Maybe there's something going on here. Stream. Stream. Uh, who knows? Yeah, it can be anything really. All right. And I can just kind of grab a little water, a little texture with just water to create textures down the bottom. Right, so got a little more pigment. Put a little here. All right. So I'm gonna let that dry. What I can do before this dries is just kind of go. There's water here. Just kind of drag my brush, dry brush, going across. So it's reflecting a little bit of what's happening up here. Okay, so that is my, my misty morning. Now I'm gonna go to a um, maybe sunset or a sunrise. So again, same, same kind of technique. So it's the same technique actually, it's not kind of, just the same technique. I just kind of let it down here, mimic the same composition, the same kind of, um, Look. So grab some yellow. Just kind of drop it in. Okay, and grab a little of my red. A little bit of, maybe I'm going to make this one, I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of mirror it. So I'm going to just put a less pigment. So less water, more pigment. So you can test it and go, oh, it's blooming, it's kind of running too much. So kind of just do this. And grab a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue in there, a little bit of blue in there. That's why I, I, I hardly ever clean my palette, just because I can kind of grab those colors that I've used already. Kind of let it run down. Since I have that bead there, I'm going to go back to my red. And we put one here. Maybe put a little bit of sepia on there. A little bit too much pigment, a little too much water. So you gotta watch if it's if it just starts running too much. You want it to stick a little. See how it's sticking a little bit there, and not just just running down too much. That's what you're going for. Some of those little areas of again going back to my. You just add a little sepia on there. To me, these these are this is very fun because you're just kind of having fun with with the medium. Got some more. Oh. Oh. Some yellow. 
Peach and yellow here. So kind of, again, you can push and pull and, you know, create little darker values in here. Letting this kind of run down, whatever this thing is right here. Like, you know, whatever that thing, whatever that little white area is, I try not to go over it. See, now I'm just kind of pushing a little, whatever that is right there. And then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, not, I'm just gonna let it, I'm just gonna let it go this way. Grab a little bit of this color and just drag it all the way down. And then go a little sepia. Again, little grasses or something here. I'll put a tree, happy tree going across it here. So here I can go, okay, I'm gonna grab a little sepia. A little bit of my red. Just, you know, just kind of put some interesting shapes in here. A little shapes in here. Connect with the, these little areas. Oh, didn't mean that, but oh well. A little something going on there. Dark area here, and it'll be dark here around this little white area, whatever. This might turn to a house. See, I'm just going really right out of the right off my palette, and just letting it just bloom and just create little interesting shapes, framing. And I'm tying it together. I'm just not. I'm just not doing just one little itty bitty piece, right? I'm moving it across. Here, maybe a little down here, and maybe last but not least, I'll just put a little one right here, right above this little right white area here. Little areas here. All right. And so, actually, that's kind of like a like a fall scene. So again, I is I can scratch, I can pull and scratch um, into some of this here. Grab my card, maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe make something here. Just kind of lifting the pressure. Just making some kind of rectangle shapes, non-organic shapes, right? So it looks like it's not not from nature, right? So those can be little houses. And at this point, I'm just making like a little abstract. Lifting up, I can go in here and scratch with the edge. I dabbed. I, I lifted up. Right. I like the clouds. Yes, the same thing. Mist, clouds, all the same kind of thing. <clears throat> so I uh, ended up bringing this back to my studio here. Um, didn't get a didn't get a chance to finish it um, during class. But um, what I'm going to do now, now that I have my, um, it's nice and dry. I created these little um, hills, rolling hills here, a little bit of mist, and here we have little little mast or uh, areas that I left um, clear or did not put water on them so it became like a little resist. Now I'm going to go ahead and start um, picking out some areas in here. Uh, maybe put a couple trees. One thing you want to kind of 
don't you don't want to do too much is if you like a certain part of your of your painting um, a certain shape don't try to cover it uh, go ahead and you know get paint next to it um, uh, you can even frame it with other shapes um, trees and again I'm still using my complex black or my uh, using my French ultramarine blue and my sepia just putting a couple of these trees and I don't want to make them I don't want to put them um, just solitary I just don't want to have one tree sticking out I want to clump them together um, you know make small ones um, large ones you know have them kind of fade out soften them just add some water but uh, I don't want to put too many I don't want to I want to keep it very atmospheric so there's a couple of tree darker ones here again very delicate I'm not trying to make them too you know too big just a couple and each one of these is going to be different as in you know it depends on how much pigment you use and how much water you know so all these little shapes that I'm kind of picking uh, picking up and and kind of accentuating are all gonna be all different you know so watercolor um, kind of does its own thing so I kind of have a couple here I think kind of liking whatever this is here so maybe I'll put a dock here or something this little area here put a little dock You always going to have to mix a little bit. You know, every single time you go back to your palette, the colors do change. So, you know, again, I'm using a smaller brush here. Nice tip. And, uh, just creating, you know, just kind of bringing some stuff out that I see. You know, who really knows what it is? A little shape here, just this part of a house here or something. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Something like I was telling you guys, telling my class earlier, you don't want to spill everything out. You want to let the viewer kind of step in closer and go, Oh, I see a little house there. I see a little wind, you know, something happening. Um, don't get too carried away I'm trying to explain everything. You want you want your viewer to step in and get a little surprise here and there. Um, let them get a you know have, let them kind of figure figure it out. Let, you know we're all going to put in our own little oh I've been to that spot in the lake or that kind of stuff. Even though you know you might have made it up, but you know what that's okay. Just kind of, you know, just, I'm not, you know, again, just sim just simplify things. Um, don't try to get too crazy with it. You know, bury, bury the shape, bury the stroke. You know, I'm going to put some trees over here. I'm going to put some trees here, bigger tree here. And, you know, just kind of work your way down from the top. Let me put on a little tree here or something. Just kind of playing around. Now you're putting in, pretty much you're putting harder edges. So you have the softness of the background with you know contrasting with and with the beautiful with the harder hardness of the um of the strokes of trees you have here i'm kind of giving a little bit of a of a shadow or heaviness down the bottom here to show you know a little a little bit of you know gravity or it can be shadows from trees or whatever you know just having a little fun with shapes very abstract 
And I put a little couple dots here just, just to see, just to give a little movement. Maybe it can be a little bit of a rain. Further out, some smaller, there, like that's good, okay. So I did put in this large little area here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right, kind of zoomed in a little bit. Now I'm gonna put this, you know, we were talking about foreground elements, background, middle ground, and foreground, right? So now I'm gonna put my foreground elements. So background all here, middle ground is this little cottage here, and then foreground, I'm gonna put a big happy tree right across the top here. This is gonna be, you know, really dark here now, you know? So I'm just gonna put some textures and then go ahead and put this tree, large tree, why not? No, a little taller, right into the sky. Why not? You know? So worst, that's the worst that worst can happen. No, I'm just gonna put plenty of pigment on my brush. Almost like a consistency of honey. Do a larger brush here. I really want to. There's large strokes in here. Some of the nice stuff that we might have made back here kind of gets covered up, and that's fine. I mean, listen, don't get, don't fall into the trap of trying to keep a certain area, you know, because you really want to work with the composition. You know, and, and nothing more. Don't 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 try to don't try to do anything more than than trying to create a beautiful scene. Maybe I'll just put another smaller tree. Maybe here. Just push up here, some, some grasses. Oh, I went all the way up here, as you can tell. There we go. Now I'm kind of going back down here to the bottom. Okay, some grasses. You probably didn't see that zoom in a little bit too much. There's some grasses here. Grab, grab some water and just drop some water here, some textures. You know, I don't know, just drop some water, who knows. Just make interesting shapes and stuff. Okay. So, we started. I'm gonna let that one zoom back out here. Alright, so. We have uh, our first one. We have our, um, you know, we have, again, I framed this area here where we're looking at this um, uh, this little cabin or something happening right here, you know. That's going to dry. I'm going to go now to my evening or dusk or whatever. Probably evening and dusk is the same thing. Uh, so same kind of thing now, I'm going to be using this time sepia and my reds to, uh, you know, my, my um, I love quinacridone coral, so that red there, my sepia is a nice way to kind of darken up a value without getting muddy. You know, it's a nice vibrant color and we do have sepia here. So, you know, we have a couple little houses or something here. First I'm just going to put a couple of these trees in here again. A little bit of red and just a little harder shapes in here to build some interest, you know, just whatever. I can do is I can even grab some water, some mother, some yellow. Just drop it in here.
zoom in a little bit for you guys. This area. Connecting the shapes. Put a couple more. Maybe a couple here in this little white area. I really want to show its softness back here, and as we move forward, move into to the to the middle ground, we can see a lot more uh, more of these harder sh shapes, the trees. And I'm gonna put another one here, I think. Again, I like this little shape right here, so I don't want to paint on top of it. I don't want to frame it. I want to accentuate it. A little white area there. Oh, that can be whatever. Some snow there. Some lingering snow that just hasn't melted yet. Another one here or something. Who knows? Let's soften here. All right. Little houses or something to have to live here. Who knows? Not really looking at anything, just gonna make some. This can be like some sort of fence or something, I don't know. Let me just put some red just up here, just some yellow, some really, a lot of pigment honey, just kind of a honey consistency. Who knows? Who knows? Ah, like I said, it doesn't matter. Just have fun with those creepy shapes. Whatever that stuff is here. Put some. Make this one a little bit different. So I'm not going to put anything here, but maybe put a couple little, tr you know, a larger tree here. Just for the fact that I have a blood tree here, I'm gonna lose these little white areas here. I kind of want to keep those as little cabins or something. Who knows? So, like I said, every single I'm just not doing just one color tree. I'm using. All my reds. I'm going to the palette get more red in my in my my mix. You know, um, just keeping it interesting. Don't just do. Oh, I'm just going to put brown trees everywhere. You know, mix them up. Little windows. I don't know. You know it kind of doesn't make sense, but does it really need to make sense? So just put some. Again, diagonal strokes, something non-organic, just so it looks like it's man-made. And that's really all you need to do. I'm gonna put just put some other dots in here. Who knows? Put some red. I got some red here. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Paint on there, but you can kind of see there. Right there, I'm gonna kind of zoom out now. Put some dots. And then, if I zoom in, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Little areas in here. Even though I, I, you know, I could have put a tree right down here. I didn't want to. I'm just going ahead. 
All right, I'm back. The dog, my dog just scared the um, UPS man. All right. Uh, so again, I'm gonna let it dry. Um, actually, it's just small little details. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the tape off. Zoom out, zoom out here. You can kind of see with all, all the tape. Nice clean edges. So we have a evening scene or a, you know, pretty much what we're looking outside. Right now it's uh, October in, in uh, Seattle, Washington, and this is pretty much what we see outside. Nice and rainy, misty. So I love it here. Lived here all my life. Something about watching the seasons change. And really get inspiration from just driving to work, um, seeing all the beautiful colors. Oh, let's put a little tape on top here. You kind of check that out there. Still a little bit wet, but there it is. All right. So, thanks again. Uh, my name is Che Lopez. Uh, I teach in uh, Kirkland, Washington at the Kirkland Art Center and at Pratt in Seattle. You can visit our website at theartofche.com. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.